This is an introduction to the reading test and also includes some strategies which you will be required to learn and master in order to improve your score in the reading test. Okay, so as an introduction, the reading test is one hour. Um, you will have three passages that you'll have to answer questions on. So that's about 20 minutes each. Um, but you will have 40 questions on those three passages. Right, the passages are of general interest for a non-specialist audience. If they contain any technical terms, these are explained in a glossary. So you will be provided uh, with a glossary at the end of a particular article if there are any words which are unusual with a short explanation. One or more of the passages will contain a detailed logical argument. And one passage may also include diagrams, graphs, illustrations, or perhaps a map. So the, the kind of passages are taken from magazines, journals, books, or newspapers. Um, the passages will deal with topics of general interest that are at an appropriate reading level for candidates entering tertiary study. So in other words, it's sort of university level reading um, in each of the articles. So the question types, there's a many different kinds of question type in the reading, um, but it's fair to say that uh, they mirror a lot of the question types that you've already looked at in the listening. So multiple choice, short answer questions, sentence completion, matching sentence endings, summary, note, table and flowchart completion. So in other words, where you've got a, a diagram or a table um, uh, or um, some kind of chart where you need to complete information on that, uh, whatever that item is, by finding the information in, in the passage. Uh, diagram label completion, where there's also matching headings, matching information, identifying the writer's views or claims, identifying information, and matching features. So there's, a, there's probably a longer list of question types for reading than there is for listening, but many of them are similar to the reading questions. Okay, when it comes to the, um, the answer sheet, um, you should be aware that the actual answer sheet that you submit has the listening questions on one side and the reading questions on the other side. So it just pays to uh, pay attention to which side of the paper you're actually doing it is, is actually labelled on a bar at the top of the page where it says listening on one and, and uh, read it, reading on the other. You should take a different approach to the listening and reading for how you answer the questions on the, on the answer sheet. During the listening you have a, a question booklet and you can, answer, you can write the answers on the question booklet and you have 10 minutes at the end of the test to actually transfer those answers onto the uh, onto the official answer sheet. During the reading test you don't get that extra 10 minutes so when you answer the questions for the reading you should put the answers directly onto the answer sheet. So any words that you put on the answer sheet you should uh, make sure that the spelling is correct. Um, you will lose marks if you misspell a word or if you put a word in the wrong grammatical form. So you must make sure that uh, you're using correct spelling and correct gr grammatical forms. So as an example, if the, uh, if the answer is the, the verb complete, don't write the noun form completion or completing. Reading component of this course, you will have access to a wide range of IELTS reading passages um, on common IELTS topic. You will practice answering IELTS academic reading questions. We will enhance your ability to understand and use academic language. You will practice your reading skills, including surveying, skimming, and scanning. We will improve your reading fluency through extensive reading practice. 
and you will learn exam taking strategies for the IELTS academic reading test. So the core skills that you'll pick up, um, of course you're going to um, read typical IELTS reading passages. Uh, you're going to practice reading skills. So using clues in the title, summarizing main ideas with keywords, and understanding the writer's purpose and that kind of thing. Practice, you're also going to practice identifying and understanding language that expresses attitude and opinion, cause and effect, and conditions. You're going to practice identifying and understanding language that connects ideas. You're also going to practice using and identifying paraphrasing in reading passages and questions. This is a very important skill that you need to pick up because the questions very often uh, don't use exactly the same words that are in the, in the passage. So you need to have a wide range of vocabulary so that you can be able to understand one, what, one, what the question is saying and where to find the answer even if the, the word form is different. And we're also going to focus on the language requirements to answer specific IELTS questions. In order to get a better score in IELTS academic reading test, you will have to improve your reading skills. So skillful readers have successful strategies for reading long passages. They know how to find information quickly without reading every word. And they know when to read quickly and when to read carefully. Okay, so let's, let's just look at uh, something uh, slightly more general here which is writing your answers on the answer sheet. So you have to follow the instructions. So just um, the same as with the listening. Uh, if, for example, the instructions are choose no more than three words from the passage for each answer, then if you use more than three words, even if the answer is correct, you will not get a mark because you've used too many words. So this is very important. It's, it's, a, it's, it's such a simple way to lose valuable marks by failing to follow the instructions that have been given in the question. Right, so you'll use reading skills to understand main ideas and to identify and understand the structure of the passage, to find details and specific information, and to understand the writer's opinion and how to deal with new vocabulary. So all of these are skills that we will provide to you later on in, uh, in smaller size chunks so that you can uh, learn these skills as we go through the course. And perhaps the most surprising instruction uh, that you would get for the reading test is that you do not read every single word in every, pa in every passage that, you're, that is in the test. You do not read the whole passage. Um, the important thing to do is to skim the passage very very quickly um, and just to have some idea of, of what it's about through think by things like looking at the title um, looking at some of the words that jump out of the page that have got capital letters maybe the the the, um, the nouns that are in there um, any dates that are in there so that you can very quickly go through any names that are in the passages so, so mark those names um, and, uh, and that's, that's all you do with, the, with the, each passage, is to skim over it very, very quickly and notice the, the sort of where the information is located. You don't sit and read because the, you just do not have the time in the test to read three long passages. Let's be quite clear about that. You do not have the time to sit down and read them in detail. So the actual method that you're going to use in order to give yourself plenty of time to answer the questions is to focus on the questions first and then you go back to the passage and try and find the information required to, to answer the questions. So the questions are very important. You then find the answers to the questions within the passage. So the initial process, I say, is, is to survey the passage. So you just very quickly look across the passage if there's any um, type, if it's broken up by paragraph titles, then you take note of those. That's going to help you to identify information later on. You look at the main title so that you know broadly what the top, what the topic of the passage is. And as I said before, you look at you look for um, nouns and dates um, and that kind of thing. And then 
that helps you to find your way around the passage later on when you're, when you're looking for answers. So one of the skills that you'll need is um, skimming. And skimming is where you um, quickly cast your eye across um, a paragraph and you try to identify um, the main idea uh, or, or the ideas of the text. So it's just, it's just a very quick look. You're not, it, it, certain things, when you've practiced this over, uh, when you've practiced this many times, certain things will jump out of the, out of the page at you. And so the, there are particular types of question that we mentioned earlier on um, there's the, that require the use of skimming. Matching paragraphs and headings, completing a summary part of the passage, or to answer multiple choice questions. So in order to do each of those types of questions, you're going to have to you, uh, develop the, the, the skill to skim. Scanning is, is, means searching for specific information. So the best example I can give for this for the people who are old enough to remember a, a telephone book. When you open a telephone book, you don't start at the beginning of the telephone book and read every page. First of all, you, it's in alphabetical order, so you know that you've got to, you've got to find uh, the, the, the name that you're looking for. You, you start off there. And then as you scan, as you look down the, uh, the line of names, there are, one, there are those that you can eliminate very quickly because the succession of letters in the name um, doesn't match what's in the particular column. So you go down very quickly, down the columns, until you start to narrow down the search. And this is, this is really the same process as scanning, only in the, uh, when you're doing the test, when you're doing the, the reading test, you're looking for a particular word, um, so your mind is focused on that, and you will find it quite surprisingly that the word will, once you're looking for it, will jump out of the page. It will jump out of the paragraph or it will jump out of the whole passage. Uh, you will find that this is a skill that you can ac acquire very quickly. So scanning, what scanning allows you to do, it allows you to find the right place in the passage to answer a question. Scanning doesn't give you the answer, it just finds, it finds you a location. So if it's a name, if, there are, if you're, the question's about a person's name or a place name, you'll find that, that name in the passage. And at that point, that's when you start doing um, reading carefully or reading in more detail. One of the problems that students have is understanding unknown words. And it's almost certain during the, uh, the IELTS test that you will come across words that you haven't encountered previously or words that you've only encountered once or twice and you've forgotten what they mean. Uh, and if this happens, uh, you should decide, first of all, decide whether it's important to understand that word. It might be that it's actually not important, so you can ignore it. If it's part of the question, then you're going to have to try and decipher what it means. And, by di and in order to do that, you should look at the context of the sentence. So the word within the sentence, what is the sentence about? That might help you to understand what the word is. So the other, the other things that, that you can, the other strategies that you can have for understanding unknown words. You can use clues from the passage to help you guess the meaning of a new word. Look at the word form. Is the, is the word a noun, a verb, or an adjective? So if you can, if you can identify that, that might help you to choose uh, the correct word for your answer. It might help you to understand the word in the context of the sentence. Look at the parts of the word. For example, does it have a prefix or a suffix that might indicate its meaning? Does it have the word pre or pro uh, at the beginning of it, or, or one of the many other um, prefixes? So start to break the word down into its component forms and that will help you to understand the word. Look at the whole sentence that the word is in. Sometimes the sentence or the context will help to explain the word. And look for signpost language around the unknown word. Understand the meaning of words such as however, in addition, because, as a result of, may help you to guess correctly the meaning of the unknown word. So the, the words leading up to the, or the phrase that leads up to the, the word that you don't understand might again help you to understand what the word is. It might make it more obvious, but don't panic about it. You'll be given a lot more practice on how to implement each of these skills and strategies 
later in the course.